Go ahead. Welcome everyone to our AVS Publications Meet the Editors event. We're glad you're here. Our AVS Editor-in-Chief, Professor E. Ray Idle, will moderate this event. But before he begins, I would like to go over a couple notes to help us as we have a good-sized group participating today. For questions during the presentation, please use the Q&A feature. Um, and we will be able to answer your questions through that. Um, also, there's a, a chat feature, and we'll be using that for the journal trivia. As we welcome your questions for the editors, we will also ask a few questions of the participants today in our journal trivia game. E Ray will review this shortly, but to be prepared, if you would like to enter an answer to a journal trivia question, please plan to enter your answer using the chat box. Your chat feature is set to be seen by hosts and panelists. This setting choice is the best when entering your answer for a journal trivia question. We'll be able to see who enters the correct answer first. And please note, as the slide says, one prize per person. So um, thank you all very much again for joining us today. We look forward to your questions. And E. Ray, thank you so much for hosting us today and moderating this event. And you can go ahead and share your slides if you'd like. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I hope uh, everybody can see uh, my slides as I go into presentation mode here. So I'd like to um, tell you a little bit about the uh, agenda and what's going to happen uh, here today. Um, uh, I'm gonna keep it brief. We wanna give you a lot of uh, time for uh, questions so that we can uh, answer them. But I'd like to introduce the ABS publications uh, saying a few words about the coverage uh, of each journal um, and then uh, introduce the editors. Uh, who will introduce themselves uh, for about 30 seconds, telling them who they are, what journal they represent uh, as an editor or associate editor, their expertise, and then talk a little bit about elaborate on the journal uh, coverage uh, area. And then we'll move on to the question and answer period. Um, I want to explain the uh, prizes that Nancy talked about. Um, probably a a, something that you'd like to participate because uh, there will be a $25 Amazon gift card for the first correct answer. So we're per periodically going to pause our uh, introductions and uh, presentations and uh, ask a journal trivia question. And the first person to type the correct answer in the chat box uh, will win the $25 Amazon gift card. So I think we should start by practicing. Right, Nancy? So maybe uh, we start out with a uh, trivia question before I even start introducing the ABS uh, publications. So go ahead, first question. Okay. Remember now, you're, you're typing in the chat and the first one to type into the chat, uh, the correct answer wins $25 Amazon gift card. Okay, great. The first uh, journal trivia question is, which ABS journal recently published a special topic collection on biomimetics. Which ABS journal recently published a special topic collection on biomimetics? And type your answer into the chat box. You can cheat by looking at my first slide. <laughs> um, feel free to answer. Which AVS journal recently published a special topic collection on biomimetics? Okay, if there is no if there is no answer yet, maybe oh, uh, we, we got one. You got one. We got one. April Jewel Biointerfaces. That's correct. Congratulations, April. Very good. All right. So we've got your email, April. I, I must say it could have been uh, could have been the uh, ABS quantum science uh, as well. Well, let me start out by uh, uh, thanking you for attending. The ABS 
uh, publications are a part of the uh, American Institute of Physics publication uh, portfolio and the ABS portfolio itself contains uh, five journals we've uh, grown over the, over the years. Um, ABS Quantum Science is the newest uh, journal and basically it is everything that has to do with quantum science, quantum biology, devices, quantum photonics, quantum communication, quantum materials, sensors, computing, and measurements. Um, the, it's a relatively new journal. Its impact factor, it's targeted to be and estimated to be uh, greater than 10. 10 and uh, perhaps we can uh, ask Jessica Hoy about that a uh, little later on in the presentations. Biointerfaces uh, focuses on biological and soft matter interfaces, both experiments, modeling, uh, and theory and applications. Journal of Vacuum Science and Technology A and B, uh, respectively, uh, has to do with AVSTA is materials uh, focus, uh, atomic layer deposition, atomic layer etching of thin films, uh, plasmas, and uh, surface science. Uh, JVSTB is more device and measurement oriented. It is what you do with those thin films and the processes that one studies. Um, electronic and photonic devices. Uh, lithography, microelectronics, nanotechnology, uh, as well as vacuum science and technology. That is, how do we make measurements uh, in vacuum, pressure, partial pressures of species, and things like that. Surface Science Spectra is a unique journal uh, and uh, 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 very uh, special. It is a peer-reviewed journal database, uh, database for materials. Um, and it's high quality reference spectra. It started out with X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, a lot of presence in ABS community in XPS, both in the JVST uh, journals and surface science spectra, but it is now expanding to include other data. Uh, and Rick Hosh, the editor in chief of that journal can tell you a little bit more. Um, so uh, before I go on to introduce the uh, editors of each journal, not all the editors are here, but all the, all the journals are represented. So those who are on the call uh, will go ahead and introduce themselves and say something more about the uh, journal. But before I go on to do that, I think we can have another trivia question. Um, there are lots of cards to give away, Nancy tells me. Okay. That's great. Okay, let's, let's have another question and remember to enter the answer in the chat box. Um, this question is, which journal publishes papers related to topics in applied and fundamental surface science, as well as thin film deposition, etching properties, and characterization? I'll repeat it. Which journal publishes papers related to topics in applied and fundamental surface science, as well as thin film deposition, etching properties, and characterization? We need a specific journal. JV, one of the JVSTA and JVSTB published different topics. Um, this is we're looking for applied and fundamental surface science as well as thin film deposition, etching properties, and characterization. Um, so far, we haven't quite got the answer yet. Think about your thin films and surface science fundamental and applied. Oh, we've got a winner. I see Paul Bagus answer JVSTA and that is the correct answer. Paul, I do believe we've got your email. Thank you very much and congratulations. So I want to go ahead and uh, uh, introduce the uh, AVS Quantum Science uh, uh, editors. Um, as you can see, there are uh, many associate editors, each covering uh, different areas. Uh, we have the editor in chief, Philippe Boyer, uh, with us. So, Philip, if you could introduce um, yourself and also uh, maybe say a few things about the uh, AQS uh, that I haven't uh, co covered yet. Uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, hi, everybody. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to, to present. Uh, 
AQS today. So as uh, Ira said, it's a, it's a fairly new journal now. The first uh, issue was uh, actually uh, out uh, by the end of uh, 2019. So it's a, a little bit less than two years ago that we started to actually uh, uh, publish some papers. Uh, and as Ira said, uh, we uh, basically, well, let's say we focus on quantum science, but we really want to cover as much as we can about uh, all the aspects of quantum science from uh, quantum information, which is a very uh, important topic today, to uh, more fundamental aspects of quantum science, also uh, related to uh, uh, devices and applications, uh, and also maybe some more uh, advanced questions like quantum biology or quantum chemistry. Um, we, uh, over the, the last couple of years, we uh, have assembled a, a fairly uh, nice team, which uh, represents uh, both the variety of topics that we can address with uh, within quantum science and also the variety of, of countries uh, that uh, actually uh, are uh, mostly centered uh, to, to quantum technologies and quantum science today and uh, we're happy to have people from asia from europe from uh, australia from, from the us of course and, uh, we have a very nice team that uh, actually works uh, to to gather uh, lots of uh, a very good publications in this journal. Um, and maybe just briefly, uh, our strategy at the beginning was really to focus on uh, reviews. And uh, there are uh, very nice reviews. We were very lucky to have uh, very prestigious authors uh, accepting to, to, to write reviews. Uh, but we are now opening to original science. And we have a few uh, very nice papers, original results that have been published uh, very recently and uh, more to come in the in the near future. And uh, we have also a strategy of uh, focusing or maybe emphasizing some topics through special collections. Uh, we had some very nice special collection on quantum photonics or quantum computers. Uh, we have a very nice one which will uh, go out and it, some papers are starting to go out now that uh, celebrate uh, Roger Penrose uh, Nobel Prize, uh, who is uh, a, a figure of, not only in quantum science, but uh, also, of course, in, in cosmology that shows how large this field can be. Uh, and and we'll be very happy to answer any questions that you have on, on, the, uh, on this journal. Thank, thank you very much, Philip. Um, I think Isabel, Philip is also uh, on, online. Isabel, if you could introduce and maybe say something about your expertise. Yes, so I'm Isabel Philippe. So I'm a scenarist researcher working in the south of France in Montpellier. Uh, I'm an experimentalist and my field of expertise are linked to quantum photonics, quantum nanophotonics, uh, quantum communication, quantum sensing by use of solid state uh, materials uh, involving uh, semiconductors, but also diamond. So uh, this is why I decided to join and find this, uh, this, the editorial team as associate editor, just in order to uh, put my contribution and my expertise in the field of quantum materials, quantum communication and uh, quantum sensing. So from an experimental point of view. Thank you very much, Isabel. Um, I think maybe uh, we can have uh, uh, another trivia question now, Nancy. Maybe you can uh, pick one. Uh... Okay. All right. Um, remember to enter your answer in the chat box. And the question is, which AVS journal currently has an open focus topic collection for spectral data articles on higher energy XPS? Oh, we have a winner. That was quick. I barely finished reading the question. Congratulations, Babak. And I believe we have your email. So and thank you very much. The answer is Nancy. Surface Science Spectra SSS. Very good. Um, so um, I would like to introduce next uh, the editor in chief of Biointerfaces, Sally MacArthur, is uh, online. Sally. Thanks so much, Ira, and uh, good morning from Australia. Um, <laughs> it's very, very early. Um, great to be here today. So I'm Sally MacArthur. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Biointerfaces, um, and I'm based here in Australia in Melbourne at uh, Swinburne University of Technology. And I'm supported 
um, by a fantastic team from across the world um, for the Biointerfaces uh, Journal, Tobias Widener from Aarhus University in Denmark and Stefan Zalsha from um, Duke University in the US. And so with biointerfaces, our focus is on how biology comes together with materials engineering and how we look at the interface that happens when biology meets materials. And so we work on um, a wide range of different um, areas as well as a journal, but we're really excited about being connected to our community and being able to support our community as we work at surface science analysis techniques. And so we have a lot of work in the journal in TOF SIMS um, and other analysis techniques that are used to uh, look at the surface where biology meets materials, but also a lot of work in the areas of biofouling um, and how bacteria and cells attach to surfaces, how proteins interact with surfaces as well. Um, and as a journal, we like to work with our different communities to develop special issues. So one of the things that we do a lot of work with, um, different people being our guest editors for the journal and having a topic that they want to focus on for the journal and they lead it and bring together a community of people around the world. And so I really encourage anybody who's with us today to let us know if there's a topic area that you would be interested in helping coordinate with us and bringing together your community um, for the journal as well. It's really important to us that we do those types of things. So at the moment, we have special topics um, just about to open on multidimensional biomaterials. So that's looking at how cells grow in 3D and how we might um, analyse them. We also have special issues coming up in a range of new areas as well. So if you keep an eye on the web and if you keep an eye on our emails from um, the society, um, you'll be able to see all the new issues as they come to life. Thanks, Iray. Thank you, Sally. Um, I want to uh, introduce the JVST uh, editorial team. JVST A and JVST B editorial team are common. So both uh, journals have the same, uh, same team. Um, I'm the editor in chief, I'm at New York University. My expertise is in, um, well, various things, thin films, uh, physical vapor deposition, plasmas, and uh, their applications in photovoltaics and, and uh, energy related uh, devices. Um, I, I want, before introducing all the associate editors, um, I would like to just point out one special collection that uh, we have of many. You can find out about all the special collections by going to our uh, website and looking under the tab of open special collections. The one that I'd like to highlight is one uh, that is featuring early career investigators. That is loosely defined as uh, investigators, researchers, um, academics, uh, postdocs, graduate students that are within um, plus or plus a minus one to two to plus 10 years of uh, PhD. Uh, degree. And uh, if you are an early career uh, investigator, you can contact me or uh, go directly and, and uh, uh, submit um, an article to that uh, special issue. Um, there is the uh, special feature of having a uh, bio published together with your, um, with your paper. And if you are a uh, not early career, if you're um, old like me, and you would like to uh, nominate an early career investigator, a student, perhaps a postdoc, or somebody who has just gone out to academia from your group, uh, you can just write me, drop me an email and nominate them for invitation. Um, and uh, um, that's the one that I would like to highlight. So the next is, uh, I'd like to go and uh, introduce Irvin Kessels, who's an associate editor. Irvin, if you could just say something about, you know, your research interests and and uh, um, and uh, the area that you cover typically uh, in JVST. Thank you, Iray. Uh, hello from the Netherlands here. So it's uh, it's evening here. Um, 
Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I said, I'm Erwin Kessels. I'm based at the Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands. Uh, and I'm working especially on atomic layer deposition and atomic layer etching. These two fields are heavily covered in uh, the uh, journal GVST A and also somewhat in B. And uh, my uh, uh, other expertise in the broader sense are in fin films and in plasmas. Thank you, Irvin. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, one of our, well, it's been a uh, uh, year plus now, I think, uh, uh, Stephanie Law, our newest associate editor, one of our newest associate editors. Stephanie? Hi, thank, thank you, Ire. I'm Stephanie Law. I'm from the University of Delaware. And my research areas are mostly around molecular beam ataxy of semiconductors, as well as calcogenide materials, um, plasmonics, and nanophotonics. I also help cover um, synthesis and devices made from two-dimensional materials and sort of related materials for JVST. Thank you, Stephanie. So I'm going to skip the alphabetical order and go to Joshua Zaid, who has uh, uh, started at the same time as Stephanie uh, Law and Joshua. Hi, I'm Joshua Zaid. I'm also at the University of Delaware. Um, I actually also do MBE, mostly of semiconductors. Um, there's, you know, some challenge in what we do, but uh, for JBSD, I tend to handle more of three fives, nitrides, uh, and optoelectronic devices, and then some of the surface science, um, but mostly E-Ray figures. I think you, you cut off there a little bit, Joshua. Sorry, uh, I, I think my connection cut out for a moment. Um, so I'm not sure how much of that you heard. You, the coverage, you covered three five in. Oh, three fives, um, nitrides, other uh, thin film, mostly epitaxial materials, um, a lot of active optoelectronic devices and some of the surface science. Thanks. Thank you, Joshua. Actually, I stand corrected. Our newest associate editor is actually Amy Walker. Amy was the president of AVS, and I couldn't uh, tap her at the same time as, uh, as uh, uh, Joshua and, and Stephanie, but Amy uh, started. And, and uh, Amy, uh, if you could tell us about your expertise and what areas you've covered. All right. Thank you, Ire. Uh, so hi, everybody. My name is Amy Walker. I'm at the University of Texas at Dallas. So hello from Texas, where it's very warm and very sunny right now. Um, so my sort of research area is in the development of simple, robust methods for con constructing complex 2D and 3D uh, nanostructures um, you, by manipulating interfacial chemistry. So from and we also developed the analytical techniques to actually look at those structures so from that list you can see that i'm interested in uh deposition methods thin films uh actually uh the devices themselves um and also uh the analytical techniques so um i am a very new associate editor for jvst so i'm not quite sure i've got perfectly carved out my my little niche um, but I look at uh, things like the thin film chalcogenides, uh, some of the uh, uh, sensor papers, uh, the lithography, um, all sorts of things. Uh, and of course, the surface uh, science aspects as well. Thank you, Amy. I think uh, uh, we can have maybe another um, trivia question. Okay, um, this question, is, remember to type your answer in the chat box. The question is, if you wanted to publish an article in the area of lithography or nanometer science and te nanotechnology, which AVS journal publishes these topics and would be the best fit? Again, if you wish to publish an article on lithography or nanometer science and nanotechnology, which AVS journal would be the best fit? Um, we're talking lithography, nanometer science, and nanotechnology. I'm still looking for the answer in the chat. Anybody want to venture another guess? Oh, 
Joseph, got it. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. JVSDB is the answer. And I think we'll double check. We've got your email as well. Very good. Thank you, Nancy. So uh, I would like to introduce uh, the Surface Science Spectra editorial team. And uh, Rick Hash is uh, the editor in chief and is online. And uh, Rick, please. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Rick Hash. I'm at the University of Illinois Materials Research Lab. And my background is uh, primarily in the electron spectroscopy, it's like XPS, UPS, OJ. And as Ivory mentioned, um, SSS began with primarily XPS data. XPS is a very widely used technique, but recently we began expanding into other uh, techniques uh, such as SIMS, uh, spectroscopic ellipsometry, uh, UV vis spectroscopy, and uh, low energy ion scattering. Uh, so, and as such, uh, we've expanded our editorial team. They had some AEs with a uh, uh, specialty in certain topic areas. Um, so as um, in addition to uh, the focus topic question that was featured in our trivia question, we have uh, another one besides high energy XPS that's open. We have an open uh, feature focus topic uh, collection on near ambient pressure XPS. And so, uh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Um, and I think uh, Alex Shard is on uh, online as well, right, Alex? Oh, yes. Um, uh, so, so I'm Alex Shard. I'm from the National Physical Laboratory in the UK. Uh, my research is, is uh, mostly uh, focused on surface analysis, uh, but particularly focused on the accuracy of measurements that are made with surface analysis. So uh, and that, that covers um, all kinds, but particularly focuses on uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Very good, thank you. Um, thank you, Alex. And I, I also want to introduce uh, um, uh, some people who uh, are in the, in the uh, background uh, supporting the, the editors and, and, and helping us. Uh, uh, the first person I'd like to introduce is Jessica Hoy, who is a senior journal manager for the AVS journals. And she is actually at the AIPP and uh, uh, manages everything that has to do with all of our journals. Jessica? Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to see everybody. Uh, as Ira mentioned, um, I work for AIP Publishing, so I support all the journals. Uh, my background is in chemistry, uh, so I'm happy to be here today and look forward to answering any of your questions. Great. I also would like to uh, introduce, I think you met uh, Nancy uh, Schulteis um, uh, and, and uh, Rachel Bain is on the online and Tonya Yandel, uh, they are, and I'm, am I missing anybody? So if you had to deal with anything that had to do with our uh, office, uh, they are the ones who are uh, helping us in terms of um, getting the sort of last minute touches uh, making sure that the uh, review process goes uh, smoothly. So um, uh, I think as editors, we um, all are very thankful, uh, uh, thankful to them. So I think what we can do is maybe have one uh, more trivia question before quest question and answer. Okay. All right. Here's a question. Um, if you were paying attention, you might have heard this, but which AVS journal currently features a special topic collection celebrating Sir Roger Penrose's Nobel Prize? Which AVS journal currently features a special topic collection celebrating Sir Roger Penrose's Nobel Prize? It was mentioned today. And some people, you've, you've been given some links. Let me see if you've been given them all. I don't know. There's a lot of links that have been given, but which journal, AVS journal, currently features a special topic collection celebrating Sir Roger Penrose's Nobel Prize? I know that's a tough one, but I don't see any answers yet. Everybody's looking it up online. 
You'll find it if you look for it. You can give it another couple seconds or so. To Roger Penrose's Nobel Prize, which AVS journal currently features a special topic collection on this? Ooh, Chris. Chris, I can't see your full name in this moment, but Chris Goodwin. -er. Thank you very much. We have a winner. And I believe we also have you on our email list. Thank you very much. Congratulations, AQS is publishing that special collection. I, I think we're uh, um, through with our introductions and I think we can go to the uh, question and um, answers. Uh, if you have any questions, you can type them in the question and answer. Please feel free to enter your questions in the Q&A box. I'm going to I'm going to start with one that maybe Jessica can answer for us. What will be the impact factor of AQS when it's announced? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ira. Um, so we've been keeping very careful track of our citations and, of course, um, you know, applying for indexing. Of course, the various indexing services require have different requirements. Um, so we just need some more publications and then we'll be able to get fully indexed by Clarivit and Web of Science. Um, but as of right now, the 2021 impact factor is looking like it'll be around 11 and a half. So we're looking at, again, for those of you who, who may or may not remember, for a journal impact factor calculation, we're looking at the citations in 2021 to papers published in 2020 and 2019. So of, co of course, we're only part of the way through the year, but we're already, um, last time I checked was mid-June, and we were uh, at 5.86. So um, we're, we're on track. Authors of <laughs> have, uh, I don't know why, uh, okay. Authors and editors have a hate love relationship with the impact factor, so. True, very true. Questions? No more questions? So maybe uh, I, can, I can ask some uh, questions that uh, you know, any one of the editors uh, can choose to answer. I know that, uh, well, I think nearly all our editors are uh, in, in academics one way or the other. They mentor and, uh, and, and supervise uh, students, postdocs. Um, I'm curious about the answer the, or the variety of answers to this question. When is the best time to start when writing a manuscript? When do you start? Anybody want to take that? Um. I tend to try and encourage my team to um, think about what they're going to write for their manuscript as they're designing the experiment. Um, <laughs> I, it, it's always nice to have a bit of a focus at the start to think about what what does the um, what's the goal of the experiment we're trying to do and thinking about what sort of data do I want to collect as we go, what sort of format to the to the um, images or the, the data want to be in. And then also what's going to be interesting for somebody else to read? What's the interesting question? Because obviously we there's lots of experiments we do as scientists where we just have to do the experiment. Um, <laughs> we just don't know or we, we, we're curious. And some of the best papers I think come out of those Friday afternoon conversations where you're like, how does that work? Or 
What, I don't know the answer to that. Has anybody seen anything published on this? And and actually identifying as you're reading um, sometimes the bit you're like, I don't know how that works. Well, perhaps I should write a paper about it because it's something that is curious to me. So I think that's always um, an interesting way of thinking about how you're going to publish or what you're going to publish is what's going to be interesting and, and what is the reader would, would as a reader what would you like to read as well so that's I think a great way of thinking about it um, one of the things that we're trying to focus on at the moment is also tutorials so papers where you're reading a paper and going I don't understand how this technique works and I, I really want to get us a, a better collection of uh, those papers so if you're interested in writing a paper on a, around your favorite topic that you think people do poorly or that you think you've got some great hints tips and tricks I know Alex is the king of here's how to do it properly uh, <laughs> people <laughs> um, those types of papers write the paper you want to read yourself I think that's the most important thing you can think about when you write when you're, when you're writing papers well yeah I think that's a uh, great advice and uh, maybe we can get back to that discussion but I see a question uh, in the question and answer. So I'll read that. And uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, maybe Jessica is a, is a very good person to answer this one. Uh, do you provide any author services such as an AI reading through a manuscript and finding the keywords? How does one define keywords for a paper that are most impactful, but do not just follow current fads? Mm. That's a great question. Um, well, from the publishing side, we do have, um, um, in terms of the keywords assignment, uh, we actually revamped our thesaurus tool about three years ago. And it's something that learns regularly from the keywords you assign during submission, but then also um, searching through the paper and identifying keywords. Um, so there'll be recommendations that are provided to you as you're submitting and you have the chance to kind of say, no, that's not good. Yes, that's right. So the tool is learning from you as you submit the manuscripts and um, you respond back to that question. Um, and then of course we do reevaluate um, and roll out updates to our thesaurus tool. Um, so that's how our thesaurus tool works. Um, with respect to your submissions and then what gets put online the uh as you look at your manuscript on citation you can see the, the keywords that are assigned on the left hand side um was there another part to that question e ray uh, you know how does one define keywords for a paper that are most impactful but do not just follow current fads i i, I suppose when the authors put down the keywords um how does one go about uh picking which is a Great question that I ask myself all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's in terms of discoverability, sometimes you know you you do want to be aware of what people are searching for, which is to say, kind of fair. trendy. But um, but you also want to be mindful of what's going to stay. You know, what will be a long term keyword. So it's it's good to kind of balance those two things out. Definitely. You can also use our most read. Um, section as well. So on each of the journal websites, they each have a most read section and that gives you an indication of what sort of topic areas people are actually looking for as well. So you'll see that um, different papers, when they're first published, lots of people go to them. And, and some of the things that we do as journals um, as well, a thing called a silight, and perhaps um, we can discuss that. One of the great things about publishing with our journals is that we have the opportunity to highlight different papers that we're publishing and they get written up um, by a, a, an expert journalist to write for a more ger general audience and we put them up as a silight. And they, they go out to be advertised and promoted outside of the community. So some of those types of papers give us a really good indication of not just what's trendy, but what would people think is really interesting. Um, and so those types of papers give us much bigger reach and it gives you a really good sense of what topic areas. Now, unsurprisingly at the moment, any paper that featured something on COVID tends to do, you know, tends to do well. 
But it's really interesting, I think, the range of different papers we're getting um, from our community. And you might think, oh, well, why would somebody write in quantum or in um, biointerfaces around COVID? But it's really interesting the different topic areas that people are actually doing research that are related to understanding these different topics as well. So I think it's, it's a really interesting way of thinking about it and really would recommend to all of you, go and have a look at all the sidelights. Um, that are available from all of our um, journals and, and see the types of topics that people are actually really interested in as well. Uh, other there questions? Was, uh, there was a question um, that was sent in shortly ago. How does a researcher organize a special issue and what makes the best topics? In other words, could it be instrumentation, materials, or a research project? Um, how, how would a researcher go about organizing a special issue and think about topics that might be needed? So I, I think I'm going to briefly take that up for JBST and then I'll go to each one of the uh, editors in chief and, uh, and um, have them answer as well. So for JBST, um, there are certain topics, special topics, focus topics that get repeated every year just because uh, they are, uh, they become uh, a cornerstone of the journal. Atomic layer deposition, atomic layer etching is one example. Um, some of those start actually from workshops or meetings, and then they become special focus topics. So the community comes to that collection to come and read it. Others are suggested uh, by authors um, and, and editors. So for example, the uh, early career special issue, which is not a topic, but, but it is a special collection featuring our early career. And that came from um, our early career uh, professionals um, uh, uh, committee at the ABS. Um, so there are a variety of, uh, of, 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 of ways for JBST. If as an author, as an investigator, you have an idea uh, you can write to me and we can discuss it, uh, whether it's appropriate or not. Typically, those who do well, they're focused, but not so focused that only a few people or a few groups are going to submit articles. They are an area that um, has some um, following, if you will, um, or uh, there's wide enough of an audience who's going to read the papers. So, you know, the, I think you can just drop me a line and say, what about a special topic in this area? And then we can give you opinions, uh, opinions on those. But they come from editors, authors, uh, um, the AVS membership. So uh, I think we'll, we, should, we should go to AQS and then biointerfaces and then uh, Rick, please. Okay, thank you, Yuri. Uh, so for our special collections, uh, so there, there is a little bit like uh, what you say, Ira is, well, mostly today, uh, most most uh, special collection were actually suggested by uh, the uh, associate editors, and uh, we try to choose topics that are uh, like really relevant, coming from, uh, uh, for example, uh, talks or sessions that we uh, encountered at different uh, conferences, and when we have the feeling that uh, we can gather a, a very nice collection of of papers if we uh, put some emphasis on, on, on a topic like uh, we did on quantum photonics uh, in the uh, earlier uh, issues, for instance. Uh, there are some uh, other opportunities like uh, the, the Roger Penrose uh, uh, celebration was actually driven by the fact that some uh, 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 associate editor was in relation with uh, other scientists who were trying to organize uh, like a special uh, conference or a special workshop and then they wanted to publish and then this uh, out like external suggestion came through me and through Jessica via uh, uh, an associate editor so uh, we try to uh, to have this uh, special collection to put some focus but some wide focus as you say not uh, too sharp so that we can gather many uh, topics very often, if you look at uh, the different special collection, you would realize that uh, the special collection in 2022 has uh, some overlap with uh, the special collection with uh, the 2019 because uh, 
uh, they could have been published there so that there is some kind of continuity, but still some emphasis on, on, on specific topics. And uh, of course, you are welcome to contact us uh, if you uh, think that uh, there is uh, maybe something missing at EQS, uh, either a topic or some emphasis that can actually put some, uh, uh, some night focus on some uh, aspects of quantum science that maybe we are not uh, uh, like uh, putting into the into the light uh, too often or, or enough uh, recent uh, uh, up to now. Sally, doing the classic need to unmute myself. Um, so for us, it's it is very much about the passion of the editor uh, or the people who bring us the the ideas. So we're really keen if you can gather a community around a topic that you want to run, go for it. That would be really exciting to us. So we um, have, as Ira said, the, the same system where we have regular special issues. So we will do something on TOF Sims um, each time that there is a, a major TOF Sims meeting. But we also have topics like bio um, fouling and things like that that come up quite regularly. The other thing that we're always really excited to do is to gather together around an individual. So we did a, a special issue last year from Australia a little update um, around uh, Hans Grieser, celebrating Hans Grieser's career and the people who contributed, who felt they wanted to celebrate his um, contributions to our community here in Australia. And that came up with people from all over the world actually contributing, which is super exciting, recognising the type of work that somebody has done or the things that they've influenced. And so over the years, we've, we've done lots of those types of issues as well. I really want to encourage everybody to as um, to get a gang together, really, and, and to commit to doing something like this. It's a great way of working together with different people, um, but it's also a great way of um, connecting with people as a junior researcher as well, um, that you've got a topic you're passionate about and you want to bring people together around it. So it's not just a matter of reaching out and saying, oh, would you write a paper? It's actually the opportunity to form a little um, team around a topic and, and really work together on what would you like this topic to look like and what do you think it could highlight? So I, I really encourage you to get in touch, um, put together a bit of an idea and, and let us know the same as Ira said. Rick? Yeah, so our, our two most recent uh, focus topic collections came about in as a result of recent uh, advances in certain techniques, for example, on um, more commercial XPS systems are becoming available with uh, higher energy x-ray sources. And so uh, we invited some uh, submissions for data collected with a higher energy source because there's a, right now there's a lack of that sort of data, at least in our database. Another one is the uh, more widespread use of near ambient pressure XPS systems. Then also uh, besides uh, technique related focus topics, they can also be topical. For example, I'm interested in energy conversion and storage. And so I put together as a contributing editor, a couple issues uh, related to uh, lithium ion batteries. And so, uh, but the, you can uh, also mix and match. You can also have uh, for some of the near ambient pressure applications there, uh, maybe do some battery applications for that. So if you're interested in submitting to either one of those, uh, please do so. If you have any ideas or suggestions for uh, topics that you think we should cover, uh, please let me know. Thank you, Thanks. Rick. Any other questions? Okay, so I, I see another uh, question, I'll read it. Do you have any way to save particular collections of papers of interest to you personally, which address specific issues really well and possibly share them with other folks, maybe to other ABS members for simplicity's sake. Suppose something like a personal focus topic collection, but not limited in time of submission. Um, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, so I'm going to um, ask Jessica to take the first part of that. I think they're asking, uh, perhaps online on the ABS platform. Uh, uh, and I don't quite understand the last part of that, not limited in time of submission. Are you thinking about 
having a live collection, personal collection that you populate yourself? Maybe you can uh, follow up on the question, but uh, I'll let Jessica maybe answer uh, whether there are any efforts in AIPP about that. Well, if they're talking about like you, I, I was wondering the same thing that you just asked, Ira, if they were asking about not just a collection we've identified because we certainly have landing pages for those um, and, and you can find those from the browse tab. Um, you can either look at journal volumes or you can look at collections. On the far left, there will be a volumes or collections um, tab for you to click on. So you can look at those collections as they populate. Um, and, but I, I'm wondering, yeah, if maybe they were saying they wanted to be able to find papers on something that a topic they chose, which um, for that, I would say you'd go to the search at the top of the page and you'd, you'd enter in your search information. You can click on advanced search to search for um, some more details besides keywords. You can filter by journals, you can filter by year, um, and then you would get a list of papers. And then of course, if you retained your search terms, when you come back and search again, if there's more papers that have published, you'll you'll capture those new papers, um, which I think would get to that point about not being fixed in time. Um, uh, Alex? Alex? Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I, I was just, just looking at the question and I thought it was a really, it sort of encapsulated a really nice idea. It's like having a it seems like the idea is to have a personal playlist of uh, papers, which you could then share with other people and say, this is a collection that I find really useful. This is an interesting idea. I, you know, um, I and, and my students, we use basically, you know, reference uh, 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 managers uh, and, and we share it among ourselves. But what is really interesting about this idea is uh, sharing among the, Society members, AVS members, uh, that's, uh, that's unique. And you can do that sort of thing with Mendeley um, quite easily. They, they, you can create public libraries that then collect things in as well. But um, I think there's interesting ways of people creating and sharing their databases um, of papers that they find interesting. Um, and to some extent, that's exactly what a collection is, um, if you want to bring those together. But I think it's an interesting way of thinking um, about how we use social media as well. Um, and putting those types of things together, I would really encourage people to think about how they, they use um, Twitter and, and um, LinkedIn and those types of tools to actually bring together papers that are interesting and they want to share with other people as well. Um, I think there, that's a really cool way of, of thinking about how you bring those things together as well um, to really just promote. Um, how many times do you see a paper or you read a paper and you're like, oh, surely that can't you remember that paper from this, these people all those years ago? So sometimes when I see people publishing new papers, I like to go back in and just sort of go, oh, actually, you might be also interested in this paper from these people that sort of is the foundations um, of this because I'm a proper nerd, obviously. Um, but I think they're really an interesting way of thinking about how we, um, again, bring our communities together. And journals are nothing if they don't bring a community together as well, which I think is super exciting um, for all of us today is we, we all get involved because we want to create a community. Um, it's not just about publishing a paper. Um, cool. It's about creating a group. Thanks, Sally. I, um, the the uh, uh, question says that so from the anonymous attendee, maybe they'd like to stay, uh, uh, stay anonymous, but um, uh, I think it's an interesting idea. I'm interested in a, a little deeper conversation about what it would bring beyond a reference manager um, uh, to the table. So I, I think it's an interesting idea and, and we can explore it. If you don't mind contacting, uh, uh, I, I think I can be a, a, a sort of an introduction point to the rest of the group, uh, but I'd like to hear more about, about what you had in mind and whether it brings uh, something new that's not being explored or can be done by other means. That makes sense. If you want to remain anonymous, uh, you know, you can follow up on the question. Okay, um, 
The other... Hey, Ray, I don't know. Um, I think Erwin, Erwin might have had his hand up earlier. I don't know if he still has a comment. I'm sorry, Erwin, you want to... No, that was by accident. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I do that all the time, too. Um, so uh, uh, one other, there was a, a previous question that was uh, sent, I think. What types of post-publication promotion opportunities are there and how do they help published AVS uh, papers? So uh, anybody want to take that? I can take it, but I don't want to uh, monopolize. Uh, maybe Jessica could be a good one. Joshua could be. I'm happy to, to get the ball rolling. And I think actually Sally covered this uh, a couple of times too. Um, you know, we have a couple of different opportunities available. Um, of course, uh, as your paper is, has been accepted, it has the chance for um, flagging for featured or editor's pick. Um, and that will allow it to be displayed prominently on the journal landing pages. Um, those papers are then uh, nominated for additional media coverage. So the media team uh, selects papers from those pools to uh, write up either with a press release, um, which would be more of a general type of scientific write-up or a silite, which is a scientific uh, highlight. Um, and then those are circulated to different uh, media outlets um, alongside the date of publication so that there's a chance for other folks to write up something about your paper. Um, and then of course, we also, um, we reach out to you um, if your paper's been flagged for featured or editor's pick to uh, ask if you'd like to have any social media uh, coverage and from your, your shared uh, content, we can then um, circulate social media for you. Um, and uh, we also reach out actually a year after the date of publication with some stats for you, if that's relevant and something that you'd like to continue to share or keep track of, just to let you know how many downloads your papers received, how many citations. So um, for promotion period, uh, purposes, tracking purposes, you'll have all that information available. Is there anything else anyone wants to add? Joshua? Uh, the only thing I would add to that is feel free to promote your own papers on social media that are published in JVST and please tag us when you do. We love retweeting about uh, papers uh, tagged in. So you can tag uh, at JVSTAB, at ABS members. Um, we're really excited to uh, help you promote your work because we, we think your work is exciting or else we wouldn't be publishing it. We also, uh, you know, uh, tweet and also in LinkedIn um, uh, put up, you know, editor's picks and featured articles and so on. It, uh, and we'll, we'll tag, tag AVS members in, at JVSTAB. So you could follow uh, them as Joshua said, but you could also follow the individual editors. Um, you know, uh, I mix professional and, and personal uh, tweets, you know, whether you, uh, you know, uh, enjoy getting pictures of, uh, of, you know, me taking pictures while I'm running or something like that is, you know, uh, uh, your business. But I, I also tweet the articles um, uh, constantly. It helps us to have your hand, uh, your your uh, Twitter, so that we can uh, we can tag you. Other questions? <laughs> Mostly bad puns, yes. I think Joshua and I are uh, racing on that, competing. I don't know that anyone wins. Yeah. Bad, bad jokes and puns. So we could we could conclude, Iray, if you'd like, with one more journal trivia question. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I, I did not. Uh, I, we didn't do enough uh, trivia. Maybe you can do two. Okay, well let me. Okay, here's the here's the question. Answer in the chat, and you'll win an Amazon twenty five dollar gift card. That's the correct answer. The question is. Which AVS journal has published the top four most cited atomic layer deposition articles of all time by all journals? Which AVS journal has published the top four most cited atomic layer deposition articles 
of all time by all journals. And answer in the chat for a chance to win. I'll repeat it one more time. Which AVS journal has published the top four most cited atomic layer deposition articles of all times by all journals? I hum you the Jeopardy music, but. <laughs> Okay, we're drawing to a close. It's, it's, um, it's actually just after four o'clock. So hopefully somebody can get the answer in there quickly. Yay. Okay, Krista, I think you already won once. But we, but we thank you. That, that actually is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Listen, thank you all so much. Thank you, everybody. And um, yeah, I guess that's, e Ray, are you finished then? For now? Yes. yes, I am. Well, I want to thank you so much. It's been great. And it's been great having everyone join us for the Meet the Editors. Thank you again. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Oh, Jennifer.